what is up guys welcome back to the channel first of the year 2022 we're gonna start out with a review and uh yeah we got one here from vinegar syndrome we got still and lace uh, interesting movie stay tuned for my thoughts All right, guys, what is up? Welcome back again to the channel. I told you guys I was going to get back to some kind of routine in 2022. So why not start out with a review from Vinegar Syndrome? And we'll start out with, again, Still and Lace from 1991. Before I get going into the review, first of all, I want to wish you guys a happy new year. And I uh, hope everybody had a wonderful time. And uh, hopefully everyone has a great 2022. 2021 was... Uh, little difficult for a lot of people and uh hopefully things just get better in the world itself this year and uh <laughs> than last year we'll see how things go but um yeah i do want to mention a couple um people that passed away here recently of course on new year's eve the day before the new year and very close to 100 years old the great late betty white ah such a such a great person such a great actress Always so much fun. Uh, let's just play, pay a little bit of tribute to her uh, from uh, a, a random movie. Let's just go with uh, Lake Placid. Come and get it! Uh. Yeah, guys. So, again, Betty White, you will be missed if you can hear me from the heavens above or whatever it is you believe in. And... Uh, yeah, almost made it to 100 and almost made it to the new year. But yeah, um, definitely a, a big loss in not just the movie community, but uh, just a big loss as, as a person. Uh, and it, I want to say, too, um, rest in peace to John Madden, who passed away a few days ago. Um, yeah, I mean, without him, we wouldn't have the Madden football game franchise that we have today that I actually play almost every day. And uh I didn't see a whole lot on social media about uh, him passing away. I didn't even know until I was playing Madden and it came up on the screen. So let's take a moment of silence for John Madden. All right, so moving on. I know there's other people who passed away in 2021. We're not going to do a whole retrospective of the year. But uh, those are some recent um, deaths that I definitely wanted to cover on my channel. Um, some people I hold near and dear dear to my heart and uh yeah all right and before we get rolling um if you guys would like usual hit that drop down description box and check out all the external links the uh, instagram twitter tiktok uh you can join the um what is it patreon yeah you can join the patreon get extra entries into giveaways stuff like that i'll, I'll try my best to work on uh, exclusive videos and stuff for you guys uh, moving forward I do have some things um, kind of planned. I'll probably do some exclusive unboxings and things like that over on the Patreon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm going to do my best this year to kind of stay somewhat consistent with that. So, uh, And I do have a couple new things up on the merch store. Um, I do have a uh, uh, the burning um, design that I uh, came up with. Um, which I thought turned out really well. And there's uh, the poster um, quote on the back there. And then I put my channel on the bottom of the back just to kind of brand it a little bit. Um, this one here I did not. Um, this is for Sleepaway Camp. Uh, kind of iffy on the way this one turned out. Let me know what you guys think. I really think the Bernie one turned out a lot better, but uh, everyone has a secret. Um, so we have, uh, I believe they're titled... Uh, I don't remember what I titled him in the store, but uh, the store uh, just, uh, link is down in the description as well. Trying to change things up a little bit, trying to not make it just channel merch, but make it horror stuff, um, stuff you don't see a whole lot of. I don't see a whole lot of stuff for The Burning or Sleepaway Camp, and there's going to be some other movies that I do some stuff for. If you guys have any suggestions uh, that you don't really see channel, or channel, <laughs> that you don't really see merch for of films that you really enjoy and that you feel um, need to be more widespread, um, you know, the word spread, 
I don't know where I was going with that. Um, definitely let me know, and I can work on something. Uh, but yeah, all right, let's dive into Still in Lace from 1991. First of all, beautiful slipcover from Vinegar Syndrome, like they always do. You have, uh, she's tough, she's tender, she's all woman and all machine. As your uh, tagline there. Here's the back, spine, all that good stuff. Nothing on this spine like usual. And then you take her out of her sleeve there. You get the reverse art, which is very late 80s, early 90s um, aesthetic to it. And uh, same quote on there as well. And for your disc, same thing going on as the uh, slip cover. All right, so Still in Lace from 1991. This is directed by... Um, Ernest Farino, Ernest Farino, um, his directorial debut, sorry, you'll catch me looking over at my notes, I'm a little rusty on these reviews, so bear with me, um, his first time directing on this one, um, he, what, he did work on films like The Thing, and Terminator, and The Abyss, and, uh, Cyborg, and stuff like that, as kind of crew member, uh, special effects, things like that, uh, but this was his directorial debut, and uh, I gotta say, he did a fantastic job for his first time directing. Um, the stars, uh, most notably, David Notting, not Notting, Notting, um, <laughs> from American Werewolf in London, uh, as uh, Detective Dunn. I believe it was a det uh, detective, cop, whatever. Um, most notably, uh, him, and uh, not a whole lot of other familiar faces in this. Um, I, I believe uh, the guy that plays her brother. Uh, Bruce Davison was in uh, quite a few things, but uh, I didn't write down to um, remember what those were. So, anyways, uh, basic story of this. Well, I'm not going to spoil too much to start out. We'll get to that at the end. If you guys want to stick around for spoilers, you're more than welcome to do so. It's, uh, I, I would say, basic rape revenge film, but uh, not so basic. Um, you have uh, Gailey is her name. Uh, Gailey Morton, I believe. Um is uh attacked by a group of I, I don't i don't even know what they are if they're um stockbrokers or what 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 their business is like legally uh but you have this group of uh five guys um that uh, attack her and uh have their way with her and uh they go to court and things turn out in their favor uh gailey's not too um pleased with these results She's very devastated and decides to take her own life. Now, we don't really get a whole lot of what happens in between then and her return, but when she returns, she is um, basically a machine. And uh, she's basically a lady terminator, um, what have you. So she starts to seek revenge on this group of guys led by the main guy, Daniel. Gee, thanks. <laughs> is the leader of this group. Starts taking them out one by one. Until all that is left is Daniel. Uh, you come to find out later in the movie. Um, I, I can't remember if it even mentioned that this was her brother early on. Uh, played by Bruce uh, Davison. Uh, you find out that it's her brother that turned her into this and all that. Uh, to go get her revenge. Like he wanted this more than she did. Uh, you know it wasn't fair that they got to live and she didn't and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah you get down to uh, just Daniel being alive. And I'm just going to leave it. At that, um, I can tell you what happens at the end. Um, again, unless you want to stay for spoilers, that's fine. But um, again, uh, basic revenge story. Uh, you don't, like I say, get really anything on how he actually turned her into this. You get a couple scenes where there's some computer things going on, some lights lighting up and stuff like that, but uh, not really any kind of detail, uh, which is fine. This is a straight to cable uh, TV film, so. You know, you're not going to have, like, high-tech special effects or, like, deep uh, d dialogue or backstories or anything like that. The acting is what it needs to be for this kind of film. I mean, it's, like I said, a straight-to-cable uh, TV, B, horror, sci-fi film. So, uh, it, it's fine for what it is. Um, of course, David Naughton did probably the best out of anyone in here, and I keep moving my fucking hands. Um, <laughs> uh, it makes me remember things better if I just move my fucking hands. All right, um... That's basically it. Um, the gore is 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 pretty damn good, I'll, I'll say. Um, with the director coming from more of a special effects background, that really seemed to help on this. And uh, yeah, some of the kills were, were pretty good, especially the um, spinny kill. I'll just say that again. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Um, 
Probably the most gruesome kill, I'll just say, is the conference room kill, but it doesn't really show a whole lot. Uh, yeah, overall, I really, um, I had a good time with this. It was pretty entertaining from start to finish. The cinematography was, was pretty good all around. Uh, I will say this has the option to watch in 16x9 or 4x3. I recommend that you guys watch this in the 4.3 format the way it was originally meant to be seen. The 16x9 was uh, actually just kind of like stretched out like you would do if you just change the setting on your TV or your player or something and just kind of expands it, kind of looks like shit. Um, so I did watch it that way just because I'm used to watching movies in 16x9, but uh, kind of made the wrong choice there. Uh, yeah, the 4.3 the looks really good. Uh, the 16x9 looks... it's kind of all over the place it looks clear for a minute the not and the um, um i'm not sure if the 4.3 is the same way with the sound because i just kind of skimmed through it but the sound is kind of all over the place as well it's a lot of up and down on this one um yeah there is a dead dawn of the dead um kill scene in here too i'll just leave that at that as well again i'll get to that in spoilers but uh as far as features on here you do get almost an hour long uh, making of documentary, how they came up, uh, up with the, uh, you know, the idea for the film. It was actually like a script that was already written. It was titled, um, Lady, <sighs> I should have wrote that down. Um, it was called something else, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very informative documentary. Uh, you get, uh, interviews with, uh, the director, producer, um, the, some of the cast shows up later on, things like that. Um, the writer, uh, you know, it seems like everyone in these B-movies, too, works with uh, Roger Corman, you know, the B-movie um, master. A um, couple guys on here worked with uh, Fred Olenray as well previously, who, of course, is head of Retro Media. They do a lot of their sales through, like, Makeflix, uh, things like that. Um, but, yeah, it actually ran 57 minutes and 52 seconds. I did write that down. And then you get a 20-minute uh, behind-the-scenes uh, photo gallery on here, which runs about 20 minutes. I wrote that down too. Uh, it actually runs, uh, well, I just wrote 20 minutes. <laughs> it's, it runs about 20 minutes. Um, it's about, uh, 18 minutes of actual, um, yeah, eight, about 18, 18 minutes or 12 minutes. I, I, I don't remember of actual behind the scenes. Uh, before that, they show images of the, of just stills from the actual film, which I, I just watched the movie. I don't really need stills. But anyways, uh, it's pretty interesting behind the scenes photos on there. And uh, that's really about it for features. You do get a commentary track on here as well, which I did not get time to dive into. I'm just, I'm really trying to get these reviews out for you guys. And if I watch all the features and watch it again with commentary or second commentary, this is, it's such a long process, but um, yeah, you do get uh, newly scanned and restored in 2K from the 35 millimeter, yeah, millimeter inner positive, uh, presented both the intended 133 aspect and the um, commonly seen 178 ratio, uh, which said 16 by 9 on there. Anyways, um, commentary track with uh, the director, Ernest Farino, and then the behind the scenes was called Iron Carbon. Uh, anger, the elements of still and lace, extended up making up documentary with all those people that I just mentioned, and then uh, your reverse cover art, English subtitles, your um, still gallery again from 1991, runs 94 minutes. This is region A locked. Here's a look at the back of that as well as it glares. This is originally released by Orion Pictures. Um, yeah, now let's move on to a couple of spoilers. If you guys don't want spoilers, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that thumbs up on your way out. Hit that like, hit, hit like and thumbs up, same thing. Hit that like, hit that subscribe on your way out. And if you would be so kind to do so. And um, have a wonderful day. Uh, all right, um, spoilers. Like I said, the gore in this movie is, is pretty damn good, especially for a straight to cable TV B film. Okay, um, the opening up of the chest and spinning around into the victim is pretty damn cool. Probably the best kill in here. And I did see in the features that that was the only remaining piece of this film is they still have that piece that spins. I can't, I can't do a spin sound. Anyways, um, but yeah, that scene is awesome. And then you have, um, I'll, I'll try to remember all of them, but I, I don't think I can. Uh, you have a uh, decapitation. Um, just by lifting the guy up and just kind of melting his fucking neck. 
um, which is pretty cool. Of course, they had his head through like a fake wall, all that stuff, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, that scene is uh, pretty damn graphic. It's gooey. I, I, I like gooey horror. Um, I love practical effects, especially. Uh, CGI is okay when it's done right, but a, a good mix of like CGI and practical is, is usually the best way to go in modern films, but practical is, is definitely uh, my favorite. So, uh, But the conference room scene is one of those scenes that you really feel what the guy is feeling. Um, he, he thinks he's getting pleasure at first and turns out to be the opposite. Um, it doesn't really show what happens if the camera does not focus down there. Um, thankfully, actually, because I, I don't think I want to see that. It's something you, you probably can't get out of your head easily. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, you, you, you just, you, you know what's going on and, and you feel it. And then it goes back to the scene later and it kind of shows a little bit of what happened, um, a little bit of the aftermath. But, uh, yeah, what was the other ones? Um, you, you get the, um, the lightning at the end um, of the film, which was pretty interesting. If you guys watched the uh, making of how they used the Tesla coils that they actually used in, like, Frankenstein, uh, things like that, uh, that have been around forever. Uh, they actually were able to rent those uh, Tesla coils and generate this lightning. And, uh, yeah, pretty interesting scene there. And, of course, at the end, they decide to... Um, journey on into the netherworld together because they really didn't know what to do at that point uh kind of left it a little bit open-ended um not quite enough closure like what happened with dunn and what's her face um yeah i mean i want to see what happened to these other characters there is a thing on here i'm not gonna spoil uh but one of the guys um, involved with the film actually wrote a sequel for himself for his own just because -ness. Um, to see what happens with these other characters, what happened with Gailey. Um, and, uh, would have been interesting to see the sequel that he was talking about, but, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but those are the kills that really stick out in my mind the most. Uh, and I, I believe there's a couple more. I think I only did like three. Um, anyways. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, it, it's a fun, enjoyable movie. If you're just looking to be entertained for an hour and a half or whatever, um, it's fine. Uh, n n nothing to write home about. Uh, oh, the one kill that I was going to talk about. The um, Dawn of the Dead uh, kill from um, the helicopter. It's Dawn, right? The Dawn or Day? Anyways. Um, definitely, st it's Dawn, right? Okay, <sighs> fuck. Um, definitely stolen straight from that with the cutting off the top of the head with the helicopter blade. But still, pretty cool. Um they had like i think they said in the features like five people off to the side like pulling these strings and stuff to get the so it's pretty cool how they did this stuff and how much work they put into these films back then now you just make a movie everything's done in post-production um you just got people sitting there editing for fucking ever um I, I i i don't like editing my own videos let alone do that for a living i always thought i would but uh i'm good at editing this 20 minute video <laughs> it already takes long enough. It takes two hours to edit a 20 minute video. So I can imagine uh, an hour and a half. Uh, I mean, an hour and a half when they're done, I'm sure they start with probably five hours of footage or some shit on a normal basis. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, guys, I definitely recommend this one. Um, a little bit lacking in features, but I think the one being an hour long kind of makes up for there not being a lot. And again, I didn't get a chance to listen to the commentary. I'm sure there's extra stuff on there. Usually when you, if you watch an hour long making of, you're going to basically hear the same stuff in the commentary. So I didn't really feel a need to watch the commentary after watching that. But uh, very informative uh, behind the scenes on here. Uh, very nice slipcover. Something a little bit different, a little bit the same. A little bit of Terminator-esque, definitely. Um, but... Uh, yeah, and the, the, the rape scene isn't really even shown, to be honest. So it's definitely one that if you're not a fan of uh, rape revenge films for that aspect, like Last House on the Left or A Spin on Your Grave or something, um, that part of it isn't really there. Uh, you just know that it happened. So that's a plus 
on that aspect of it, if, especially if that's something that bothers you, which um, I'm sure most normal people that would probably bother. I'm pretty immune to it myself by now after watching so many um, films that deal with that kind of subject matter, but uh, not that I'm a fan of watching it. I think the wrong way, but uh, yeah, Still in Lace, guys, from 1991. Um, I, I recommend um, going ahead and uh, purchasing this bad boy, um, getting this nice slipcover while it's still available. Uh, I mean, if you want to stream it first, I'm sure it's probably on Tubi or some shit here on YouTube or whatever, but um, I, I recommend purchasing it, um, especially for that hour uh, making of documentary and everything. So, yeah, that's that's my take on this one, guys. We're at 20 minutes, so I'm going to get out of here. I try to keep my reviews at about 20 minutes. So, again, I hope everyone had a great New Year's. Again, rest in peace to Betty White, John Madden. Uh, you guys are going to be sorely missed in, in, in the world, but um, is what it is, you know. Um, they lived good lives, and... Um, they did a lot of good for um, people, and, you know, Betty White just made you laugh, made you smile, made you cry, made you, and Madden brought us what we had today with uh, the football games, and of course was a was a hell of a coach um, uh, back in the day and everything, you know. I... All right, guys, as always, peace, love, and happiness to all of you, and I will catch you guys next time. Later.